So today we're going to talk about how to prep your Facebook page for a big event. All right. So you have a fundraising event coming up, a walkathon, a um, you know a gay a gala, whatever it might be. You have an event coming up, and of course you're using other channels to promote that event, like email, maybe direct mail, phone calls, traditional PR, maybe advertising the newspaper. And you also want to make sure that your Facebook page is ready as well. You know, prepare your Facebook page for prime time. So what we're going to do is today, basically, we're just going to go over a very quick checklist. Okay. Checklist is creating a calendar for your content, determining the roles, the right roles for managing the page during the event, letting people post on your timeline, filtering comments, negative comments or whatnot on your page, letting people send you private messages, updating your cover image, cleaning up and rearranging the tabs on your page, creating a Facebook event with your page, uh, drafting or scheduling posts, uh, promoting the event, and then pinning the best posts to the top of your page. All right. So we're going to go through these one at a time. The first one is to create a calendar for your page content. Now this is probably a longer term um, thing that, that should be done really for organizations that have more than one communication person, or if you yourself are reporting to a, a executive director. That way everybody can kind of see who's posting what, an easy way to do that is with a calendar. I usually recommend using a Google calendar, creating a private Google calendar, and then inviting people who you want to see that calendar, just invite them through Google. Very straightforward. And this is just a screenshot of how you might use an event in Google Calendar, you know, creating an event, and how you might use that to communicate what the content is and who's going to be posting it and so forth. Okay? So that's creating a calendar. Uh, second step is to determine the roles for managing the page. One mistake that I see uh, that's pretty common is that organizations will assign a role, meaning a Facebook page admin, someone who's actually going to manage the page. There are five different levels of admin access, by the way, and here's a screenshot here from admin all the way down to analyst, you know, insights analyst. And I'm showing on the screen here what people can do, what the roles can do if you give them this um, ability, you know, if you assign certain roles. Now, the mistake that I see a lot is that organizations will just make everyone an admin. And that's not a good idea because if you have someone who's, say, part-time, temporary, or an intern, and you give them admin access, that person has the ability to delete the page or do a lot of damage. Not that they would, but, you know, unknowingly they might do something that that cannot be undone, like merging pages, changing the name of the page, changing the page URL, changing the category and so forth. You want to have limited access to those type of features. And you can limit that by only assigning, you know, certain people uh, admin access, right? So if someone's only responsible for pu publishing content, Great. Make them an editor. If someone's only responsible for replying to comments and managing the community, just make them a moderator. You know, assign the appropriate level for each person that's managing the page. So, um, and next one is let people post updates on your page. So some people don't allow Facebook users to do this. Some people do. But during an event, it's a good idea, if you're not, is to let people post content on your page. Let people post videos and photos. What this does is this actually increases the reach and engagement around your page. And the reason why is because during a big event, some people might go to your page and post photos or post questions or post links on your timeline. Maybe they have a question about the event. Maybe they want to share um, you know, a photo or something from last year, a photo from a previous event. There might be a number of different reasons why people are going to post to your page or why they want to post to your page. You want to give them that ability because when they do, their friends are exposed to your organization. Every time someone posts a photo or a video to your page, their friends see that action. Okay. Now, <clears throat> some people are concerned about what if they post negative stuff or inappropriate stuff. I'm going to get to that in a second, but you can review posts. So there is a feature in Facebook that allows you to review posts published by other people before they actually show up on the page. You can do that. I would recommend um, doing that only if you have the ability to review posts quickly and frequently. Okay. You really have to keep, keep your eye on this, right? Now, the next one is 
to filter hurtful or hateful language. So if you haven't done this, you might want to consider it. Um, <clears throat> obviously, some organizations invite hurtful and hateful comments or uh, more than others. You know, there are certain types of causes where there's, you know, a, um, you know, people just don't like the causes, whatever it might be. OK, gay marriage, people with developmentally dis disabilities, people with, you know, certain issues or whatever. There's always some haters in di various different communities. <clears throat> and what you want to do is you want to block that language, right? So in your page under settings, the settings feature there in the general section, you just click on settings at the top of your page, you scroll down, you're going to see an area called page moderation. You can simply type in the words that are either hurtful or hateful. Don't uh, include words that are talking about the competition, you know, names of other quote unquote competing organizations. Uh, and don't think that just because you have a whole list of words here that you're good and the whole page can just run on autopilot in terms of comments, you still need that human moderation so that people can actually read and reply, you know, engaging you, engaging with your community, looking at comments, replying, liking to liking comments, replying to comments. That is the, the surest way to grow a community over the long term, right? It takes time, but it's definitely worth the investment. Uh, but of course, you don't have a lot of time during a big event to deal with like negative people and negative language and all that. So that's why Facebook gives you this ability to moderate the content. OK, so it's filtering hurtful or hateful language. The next one is let people send you private messages. This is another feature that allows you to turn on a messaging feature on your page. If you go to your page, you click on the settings tab, you scroll down. You're going to see messages. So when you turn this on, it's just um, you know one click of a mouse. You just select it, click save, and then it's on. This allows people to send you private messages during the event, right? The only thing with this is that you want to be prepared to respond quickly to messages in the in the middle of a big event. Someone's going to have a question about something. You want to give them the access to you. You want to give them many ways to contact you for sure, but you want to make sure that you can respond quickly to these messages, right? And it's certainly okay to turn this on during an event. And then after the event, you just turn it off. Next one is update your cover image with event information. You want to put the event on your page, include the date and any key details. If you're going to have a, a spokesperson or a recognized expert or celebrity at the event, or even a big giveaway, a sweepstakes or something like that, or a silent auction. You want to have uh, uh, information on your cover that, that uh, makes the event attractive with all this really cool stuff. Now, when you create the cover, and I recommend that you use Canva, canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com, and go there, they have Facebook cover uh, templates that you can use, and you will look like a graphic design ninja if you create your Facebook cover with Canva. But when you do that and you upload it to your page, click on your cover, and in the description of the cover, make sure that you include information about the event. You know, include the event URL. If you have a registration page where people are gonna register for that event, make sure that that's in the cover description, in the photo description, okay? Um, the next step here is you want to clean up and arrange, rearrange the page tabs. So there's little tabs that you have underneath your page, and I'll show you right here. We can see them right here, timeline, about, photo, reviews, and there's more. You know, we can look at more tabs right here. But what you want to do is you want to rearrange the tabs so that the ones about the event or the important ones are easily seen when people visit your page. Right now, you can remove um, outdated tabs or tabs that you're not using anymore. You simply go to your settings on your page, click on the settings menu, go to apps, and to the right of every tab, you'll see an X. If you click on X, it'll remove it from your page. If you click on edit, you can uh, edit the, the content settings of the tab. So you can change the name of the tab. And what that will do is that will change the name of the tab as it appears right underneath the cover image, okay? You can't change the name of about or photos or reviews, but any custom tab that you have, you can change the name of the tab or any third party tab, you can always change the name of. Now this is a constant contact tab, so we can change the name. We can even change the tab icon. If we click change, 
we're going to be redirected to a new tab on Facebook. We can upload an image, a new image to replace that custom tab image. The dimensions are 111 pixels wide by 74 pixels tall. If you want, want to just jot that down and you could use Canva to create that really quickly. Canva allows you to create images that are custom dimensions, right? So you can create a quick custom tab image. That's not going to be that visible, but it will be in the sidebar on the tab when people are visiting your page and they scroll down, they'll see that on the left hand side, the sidebar on your page, right? So that's uh, cleaning up and arranging the page uh, tabs and you can uh, re rearrange them if you go to your page and you click on more let me see if you go to your facebook page you click on the more menu you're going to see a selection or an option that says manage tabs right when you click on that a new window pops up and you can simply drag or um, you know drag the tabs around the only ones you can't move is the about tab so the about tab cannot be moved it's always going to be on the far left but you can rearrange photos, events, likes, and any other custom tabs that you have. I recommend that if you have a custom tab pr promoting the event or talking about the event, definitely take that and just drag it up, up below the About tab. You know, That way, it's going to appear right next to it, to the left of it. Right? And again, here's the About tab. Your custom tab or whatever or event-related tab is going to show up right next to it instead of the Photos tab. Right? So that just gives the the tabs more visibility. The other thing is that you don't want to have any outdated or broken tabs, stuff that's not being used anymore. You don't want to have that on your page. Just remove those tabs. Okay. Um, create a Facebook event. Now this is really a topic for a totally separate uh, hump day coffee break because it's there's a lot involved to in creating a Facebook event. But the quick and dirty is make sure you create an event with your page, not your profile, right? You want to have the event connected to the page, not your profile, not a group. You also want to include a registration link in the event. So when you create an event, there's a field for, it says tickets, you know, a link or a URL to buy tickets. You want to include your event registration link in that field, right? And then the third point here is more of a strategic approach. It's really driving people who register to RSVP to the event. So in other words, when someone registers for your event, make sure, you know, obviously you want to follow up with them and say, hey, thanks for registering. But they're going to want to know, you know, what can I do next? What else is there for me to do? Or, you know, what else is happening with this event that I'm going to be attending? Well, <clears throat> RSVP to our Facebook event and you're going to get the latest news because we're just going to post it on the event wall. Not only that, but you could also see other people who are attending the event. Maybe some of your friends are attending and you can hook up before, um, maybe have coffee and then go to the event. You know, so it's a real it can be an event can be presented to be very useful, something that people find a lot of um, you know, utility in. Wow, here are the cool extra things that are going to be in this event, pictures of silent auction items, um, <clears throat> pictures of people speaking, other stuff at the event, behind the scenes photos or videos you can post on the event wall. Uh, so that gives people a reason to join, right? So when they RSVP, the critical thing here is that when they RSVP and they say that they are going to attend, many of their friends now are becoming aware of that event because their friend RSVP'd. It creates a story in the news feed, right? Uh, and if a lot of friends are RSVPing to an event, it, it starts to become a recommended event or a top event within a friend's network, within the friend network. OK, so make sure you're driving people to RSVP to the event. They, you just don't create it and they RSVP. You actually have to proactively drive people to RSVP to the event. Best way to do it, in my opinion, is with email marketing. So when someone registers for an event, make sure they get a follow up email, sending them directly to this Facebook event to read to RSVP. Make sure you tell them ahead of time. Here's why you want to RSVP. There's going to be all this cool stuff. Plus, you can see who else is attending. Click here to RSVP, okay? Uh, the next step is you want to draft and or schedule posts promoting the event, right? Now, so in, a, in your Facebook page, if you go to the top of your Facebook page, you click on activity, you'll notice this is an area where you can create scheduled posts or posts that you schedule will show up in the activity area. 
uh, posts that you draft will show up in the draft folder. So this is this page actually has 36 scheduled posts going out over the next month. Um, and the way to create a scheduled post is you just create a post like you normally would on your page, but instead of clicking on post, you'll notice a little drop down menu next to that uh, page, next to the post, and you will have two more choices schedule or draft. When you click schedule, you'll pick a date and time that will, sh that will put that post in the scheduled posts um, feed within your activity section of your page. And you can always edit the post or change the date and time that it's going to be published. OK, uh, make sure you're getting notifications when these are published because you don't want to schedule something, you know, say a week from now. And you right now, you know, wow, this is such a great post. This is going to be great. And it's published. A, it goes live a week from now. And then you're not you forget that it went live. So make sure that you're getting notifications about these posts. And you could do this right in the notification section of your page. OK. Almost done. Last point here is to pin the best post to the top of your page. So you will publish a few different posts talking about the event in different ways. Behind the scenes photos, pictures of auction items, um, you know, other teasers and incentives to encourage people to register for the event or at least get people talking about it. You want to uh, look, use Facebook insights to look at the best, most engaging posts, looking at engagement rate, you know, the number of likes, comments, and shares, and pinning that to the top of the page. Make sure you pin it or unpin it after the event is over. All right. So that is it. And I'm going to open it up for Q&A and let's see what we have in the questions section. And let's jump over here. Make sure I get that again. So when you go to your page, you click on more, you click on manage tabs and you can rearrange the tabs, okay? Uh, you click on save and then you're done. I'm gonna put the connect right, on, right next to about, we'll click on save and we have connect is now showing right up next to the tab. Now, in terms of the image, the image will show up in the left-hand side right down here at the bottom. You know, these sections, we can also rearrange the sections of the sidebar. So if we click on manage sections, we can take apps and we can bring apps all the way up underneath about. If we click on save, then that's going to show up right here. OK, see how it's a little bit further up on the page uh, to edit the, the icons and to edit the name of the custom tab. You go into settings, you click on apps, you click on edit settings and you can change the name right here. You can also change the tab image. It will open up a new tab. Uh, you click on edit and you're going to simply upload an image. The image size, as I mentioned before, is 111 by 74 pixels. OK, so that is changing the tab and rearranging it and all that, all that fun stuff. Let me see here. Um, beautiful. Vern is asking, let me see, uh, can you explain what you meant by create an event with your page versus profile? Yes. So. When you create an event with your page, you're going to create it right either from your event tab. So you go to your event tab on your page, okay, and you can create an event. Just click on event and you go through the process of creating an event, but it's going to be created by the page, right? Uh, you can also create an event directly from your timeline as a post. So if you click on to create a post, um, and you can create an event directly from your page. Okay. You don't want to create one with your profile. The reason why is because then it will be associated with you, the person, right? So if I go to me, uh, actually, if I go home and if I click on events in my little interest list right here, I can create an event, but that event will be associated with me, John Hayden, and I don't want the event to be associated with me. Okay. I want it to be associated with the page. So make sure that you, you know, you, cre you create the event with the page starting out as the page. OK, let's see here. Uh, Liz is asking uh, when it comes to creating a custom image for your event is less more. Hmm. Let me be more minimal. It depends. I mean, it really just depends upon the. Com uh, yeah, I is less more creating a custom image. You mean for the cover image? I would say less is more, you know, 
you know, I would say less is more, uh, especially if you're trying to drive people to register for an event. You want them to click on a link to go register. Just give them enough information that's going to be a teaser and motivate them. Well, I've got to learn more. There's some really cool stuff, some giveaway prizes and stuff like that. I've got to check this out. Let me go. Let me go visit the regist registration page. OK, so always give people a reason to visit the registration page, not the Facebook event, but your registration page if people are registering for an event, you know, with Eventbrite or Eventsprot, all right? Uh, Mary is asking, would you recommend we start this process in the middle of a campaign? We already have started. We're waiting to start at the beginning of the campaign. If there's a lot of stuff you can do right now, so anything on this checklist that you can do right now is, I would recommend doing it, okay? Um, Rosemary is, saying if doing the same event annual is better to set up its own event page. No, don't create an event page. In other words, don't create a whole Facebook page for an event, you know, an annual event, even if it's your biggest event ever, right? Because you want to have all of that connected with your page. You want to have all of your events connected with your page. That gives your page more exposure. You don't want to have to get into managing a separate Facebook page that's only relevant once a year. That's not really going to help you in the long term, and it's just going to create a lot of extra headaches and a lot of extra work. Just create the Facebook event uh, and, and then manage that as, a pay, as you would a page. Okay. And when I say manage that as you would a page, I mean, uh, you know, your event, here's an event right here as an example. Uh, and let's see, it's not loading, but you know, we can go here and we can post updates. We can reply to comments on posts and so forth. So, you know, manage the community, manage the comments, the RSVPs and so forth on the page itself. Okay. On the event page. All right. Katie says, thank you. Welcome. It is now 1136. So I want to be super sensitive to people's time. Um, have a great week, have a great uh, weekend. And if you're in the Northeast, good luck shoveling out. And we will definitely talk uh, Monday. You'll see in my newsletter a link to the video recording of this uh, training session, as well as a link to the slides too.